Guess what we're doing today? Oh my gosh, you guys, what a crazy week it has been. So I'm going to start off by telling you, first off, the dogs are fine. All the dogs are fine. All, well, minus the little cut Eleanor has on her ear, but you can go watch a vlog to find out more about that. The dogs were playing outside and somehow she cut her ear, but thankfully we didn't have to rush her to the vet for that. Today, I am going to talk to you guys, however, about what to do when your dog gets stung by a bee or bit by something that makes them start to swell up. And let me explain why. So last week we let the dogs outside. As you guys know, we watch the dogs when they're outside in the morning. We didn't see anything happen. They were out there, they did their thing, they all came in, they had their breakfast, and then they took their morning nap. While they were taking their morning nap, I went down into my office to get some work done. About an hour later, I get up to check on the dogs. And since they were in the living room, I was like, all right, I'll go in there and check on them. And I noticed something was wrong with Kira's face. It was really swollen, so I called Jamie upstairs, and when we realized that her face was as swollen as it was, we were like, uh, we should probably call the vet. Now, we've seen this before, and we know what to do, but her face was swollen more than we're used to seeing, like it wasn't just a little bump. So I called the vet, and they said, you know, all right, bring her in, we got a spot for you. So we headed up to the vet. So my guess would be you ate a spicy fly. Did you eat a spicy fly? And we determined that she was either bit by a bug or possibly stung by a bee. Regardless, she was having some type of reaction to whatever got her. So the vet gave her a shot of Benadryl and a steroid shot, and then they sent us home. By the next day, she was pretty much back to normal. And you would think that it would end there, but there is more to this story. So part two of the story, a few days later, we let all the dogs outside and we watched Eleanor run to the corner and then kind of paw at her face. So we called everybody back in, and within 10 minutes, we knew exactly what happened. Eleanor started to swell, and fast. Now, since we saw this one and we knew that she most likely was stung by a bee, we went ahead and we gave her Benadryl. And I will get to more on that part of it in a little bit. So we gave her the Benadryl, we put ice on it, and we waited for Thunder Bay Veterinary Urgent Care to open. I did have my emergency vet number on, like, ready to call, but I figured, all right, we've got two and a half hours for the urgent care to open. We're just going to wait. We kept a close eye on her, and she kept swelling. It was crazy. You can see from these photos here, it just kept swelling. So the moment they opened, I called and they immediately got us in. Huh, I feel like we were just in this room yesterday. They gave her some more meds and a steroid, and it took Eleanor considerably longer to not be swollen, and we think that's because she got stung, yes stung, more than once. So shortly after we saw her pawing her face, my husband and I actually went out to the yard and we found a paper wasp nest that was in the ground in our yard. And that'll be up in an upcoming vlog on Snow Dogs Vlogs as well, so if you guys want to see more about any of these stories, the vlog channel, more detail over there. So anyway, to make a long story short, the dogs got stung by bees, we destroyed the bees, paper wasps are very aggressive bees and they actually kill honeybees, so we destroyed the bees, so hopefully we don't have to deal with this again anytime soon. And now that you know this part of the story, two of our three dogs being stung by bees, apparently Memphis is the smart one and she stayed away from them, we want to talk to you guys about what you should do in a situation like this. So first off, you guys all know that I have a pet first aid kit that I actually made myself, and if you guys are interested in learning more more about the kit and you want me to do a new video updating all the things in our kit, leave us a comment and maybe that's what we'll do for next Saturday's video. So if you want to see that, don't forget to be subscribed, click that bell to turn on all notifications, and then that's most likely the video we're going to put up next week because I know a lot of you guys are really curious about what we keep in ours. Two of the things that we keep in our first aid kit, of course, are Benadryl and a cold pack. I will say, always speak with your veterinarian before you give your dogs any type of medication. They're going to tell you how to give, what to give, based on the weight of your pet, things like that. Now, because we have been down this road before, I already know these things. I know how much we're supposed to give for a bug bite or a bee sting, which is why we did give Eleanor the Benadryl as soon as she was stung. The general rule is one milligram of Benadryl for per one pound of body weight, but again, call your vet, ask your vet, because you don't you don't know if it's going to interact with a medication that your dogs might currently be on. If and when you do have a dog that gets stung or bit by something, the first thing you're going to want to do is contact your vet. Of course, dogs, just like people, can have different reactions to bites and stings. Some dogs will be fine with some at-home treatment. Some dogs can swell up bad enough that their airways will close up, and that becomes an emergency really, really fast. So the faster you call your vet to find out what they want you to do, the better. They may instruct you to give your dog some Benadryl at home. Now I do want to say always make sure to check 
the Benadryl that you have, make sure it's not expired, and make sure that it does not contain xylitol as an ingredient. Some forms of Benadryl do. Your vet will clarify exactly which type of Benadryl to give your dog as well. So once you talk to your vet and you decide whether or not you're taking the dog into the vet immediately or if they want you to go ahead and start the Benadryl or things like that at home and see how they do. After that, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is start looking for where the bite and or sting can be. If it's a sting, there may still be a stinger in it. And if that's the case, the stinger is gonna keep releasing venom, which is gonna make your dog swell up even more. Now, if you find the stinger easily, you don't really wanna squeeze at it because that can also release more venom. But if it's sticking out enough and you can grab it with tweezers, you can try to do that. Another good trick is you run like a credit card or something rigid down the snout of your dog. And that can sometimes push those stingers out. And another thing you can do is you can try to mix a bit of baking soda with water and you make like a paste and that can also draw out the stinger. Just make sure that your dog doesn't eat this stuff because it's not good for them. Getting the stinger out is gonna help slow down the swelling. We did find a stinger in Kira's nose but we never found one on Eleanor's nose. I mean, Kira's nose is white and Eleanor's nose is really dark. And paper wasps can actually sting multiple times without losing a stinger. So Eleanor may not have actually had a stinger still in her face. Once you have found the location and removed the stinger, you wanna ice the area. Some dogs are gonna let you do this, some dogs don't, but do your best. Even a cold, damp washcloth can help. Basically, we're just trying to bring that swelling down. We usually try to do a 10 minutes on, 10 minutes off for at least 30 minutes. So three rounds is gonna help bring down the swelling and then you can do that every few hours. If you found the area of the bite, they also do make anti-itch sprays for dogs that you can use on these areas. If you notice your dog is trying to scratch at the area, you really don't want them to do that as this is just gonna make everything stay swollen and take longer to heal. So you may even have to use a cone to stop them from scratching the area. The biggest thing in this situation, you guys, is not to panic. Stay calm, pick up the phone, call your vet. They might instruct you to come right in, they might instruct you to administer meds at home, but either way, keep a close eye on your pet. With Eleanor, her swelling just was not going down. And even after we gave her the Benadryl, and then the vet gave her more stuff, I had to call them again a little later in the day because it just wasn't going down. So their instruction to us was to wait a few more hours, which I think was a total of six hours since her first round of Benadryl. And then we gave her more, and then we gave her more another six hours later. Again, this was all instructed to us by our vet based on her weight and her age and all of those things and after those few rounds her swelling finally started coming down we're pretty sure that eleanor actually got hit multiple times because like i said paper wasps are mean little bees or wasps i guess so we got really lucky with both stings as we knew how to react but we understand that not everybody does some people are going to think that a bee sting on a dog is not a big deal but it can become really serious really fast. Some dogs are gonna have a full anaphylactic shock response to a bee sting, just like people. Reactions from bee stings and bites like these usually recur occur, like you can see that they're happening within 15 to 20 minutes of being bit, but in some dogs, there might be a delayed reaction. So keeping a close eye on them is really important and knowing how to react is really important. Some of the signs that you need to take your dog to an emergency vet as fast as possible would be severe swelling in the head, neck, and face as this could cut off their airways. This is something that you really need to pay attention to. If you see like hives or little bumps start to form, this is usually a sign of a way worse reaction. If your dog has any issue breathing or if they're making any type of wheezing noises, this could be an indication that their airways are swelling and you wanna seek help as soon as possible. If you've noticed like excessive drooling or vomiting or dizziness or seizures or anything like that, lethargic, if your dog's gums are pale, you are gonna wanna get to the closest emergency vet as soon as possible. But again, as I said, do not panic, try to stay calm and that's gonna help you be able to relate to your vet what's going on. Again, this is why even though we knew how to react at home, I still contacted our vet. I still wanted them informed. And because of the massive amount of swelling on each dog, I still took them in. And yes, they're all fine now and the bees have been eliminated. <laughs> So again, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will try to do what I can to answer them. I am not a veterinarian, but I do have some experience with bug bites and bee bites with dogs, as you can tell. And again, if you guys want to see 
our dog first aid kit in detail, let us know and I will make a fully detailed video teaching you how to build your own dog first aid kit for your dogs. We can do that in next week's video. Hopefully now you guys have the knowledge to help out your dogs in case of a bug bite or a bee sting and we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay positive, dream big, and we will see you again soon. Mm -hmm.